Okay. It's time to write our first test. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at what Android has already provided for us, an example test that we can take a look at. So inside of my test directory, I see this example unit test class. Let's take a look at that. So it says example unit test here. And then there's an annotation on top of my test function, at test. The test name is addition underscore is correct. I don't love that as a test name, but this is just an example. So, and then we have our assertion. Assert equals two plus two is four. Note that we put our expected value first and our actual value second. In Kotlin, you don't necessarily have to use the argument labels, but Android Studio fills those in for you. And that's what these two things in gray are right here. Let's also take a look at the dependencies in this file. So we have here a class, example unit test, doesn't appear to inherit from anything. It's in Kotlin, the file says example unit test.kt. Good to know. Okay, so we're inside of our app package. We import org.junit.test, that's the annotation that we see right there. And we also import org.junit.assert.star. All of the assertion matchers in the junit assert uh, group, which includes this assert equals right here. Okay, so now we have an idea of what our test looks like. Let's go ahead and run it. There are a couple of ways that you can do this in Android Studio. So you can click on this little triangle thing right here and get run addition is correct. You can also put your cursor anywhere inside of a test or a test suite and hit Control Shift R. And now you can see that it's running my test. It says that it passed because 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. If I were to change that to 2 plus 1 and do Control R, which means rerun the last thing I ran, now we see that it fails and we see how it fails. We have an assertion error. The expected value was 4, but the actual value was 3. We also have this click to see difference thing, which is useful if you're looking at a lot of JSON or something, but is not necessary if we're looking maybe at these two integers, clearly. Okay. So this is great, but this test isn't testing anything in our Android application yet. It's testing the addition function in Kotlin which is cool and provides us an example of how we might write and run a test. And that's nice. But we are going to have to get a little bit more complex in order to test the logic inside of our application. Because unlike addition, the functionality of our application doesn't come standard with the library. Rather, we have here an activity that we need to hook into the logic of in order to be able to test anything that's going on in here. Similar to iOS, the Android framework relies on allowing us to inherit from a rather tall inheritance hierarchy of classes. It does this so that Android classes can handle a lot of the trickier elements of mobile computing, including thinning the application, recycling views, handling a flexible user interface, and other things that we're grateful to not have to think about as much as we would if we weren't extending those classes. That inheritance hierarchy comes at a cost, and that cost is that it makes things a little bit more difficult to isolate and test because we now have all this functionality that we're inheriting that our tests need to play nicely with. Luckily, we have a tool for that in Android. It's called Roboelectric. Let me show you what this is. So Roboelectric, is a library for Android that lets us run our tests on the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, as opposed to needing to run all of our tests in an emulator, which is this thing. Now, we can write UI tests for an emulator, but they run into some of the same struggles that we saw when we, when we were writing simulator tests for iOS. They have a tendency to be 
a little bit flaky. They tend to take a long time to run. So we tend to want to use them for, say, a happy path on a full feature. But in order to get really deep with our tests and test a lot of little details, it's important for us to have fast, really modular tests that we don't necessarily need to wait on. The other thing is that in a build environment, as we're trying to do continuous integration or continuous deployment, we may not necessarily have an emulator available on our build services like we do on our computers where we're running the, t we're running the app and looking at it. So if we don't have an emulator, we still want to be able to run those tests in the build environment. Having RoboElectric allows us to test Android type objects on the JVM so that we have access to that without the emulator. They also happen to be pretty fast. So RoboElectric started out as a project that was independent of the Android framework itself. It was designed to make unit testing easier in this dependency heavy framework where we were inheriting from a lot of things. Essentially what it does is it makes a version of the Android jar, Java archive file, that plays nice with the Java virtual machine. That allows us to create what are called shadows. Shadows are versions of our activities and other objects in Android that we want to be able to take out and inspect in our unit tests. So here's an example of what a RoboElectric test might, might look like. We use RoboElectric to set up our activities. This particular syntax is obsolete, and I'm going to show you a more updated syntax for this that gives you more control over the life cycle of the activity in Android. So that's RoboElectric. Now, RoboElectric is considered an official dependency of Android that's been officially recognized by Google. Google's actually done that with a number of different things. Android Studio came out of JetBrains and now has a bunch of active Google development. RoboElectric, similarly, once independent, now not so independent. Why am I telling you about RoboElectric? Well, because it doesn't come standard when we get a brand new Android application. And so we need to include a dependency, a couple of dependencies really, that allow us to run uh, tests with RoboElectric in them in our application. So we're going to add those dependencies here in the dependencies block of our app level build.gradle. You'll notice we already have one test implementation item here that we've used in our unit tests already. It's JUnit, which is the framework typically used to unit test Java applications. It's worth noting that Kotlin and Java are completely interoperable. Kotlin was designed to be interoperable with Java such that on large Android projects, it would be possible to start introducing Kotlin without necessarily having to migrate the entire project at once. This makes it easier for developers on those applications to pick it up with less risk of overhead. So I have test implementation, JUnit. That's great. I need a couple of other things. So I need test implementation. And now I'm going to get something from Android X, like you see above. This time I'm going to get it from test. And I want version 1.1.0. This is stuff that you can look up and get out of, say, the RoboElectric documentation. I'm going to go ahead and give you the versions here because I've pre-tested which versions of everything work together well in this application. It can be a little bit tricky to figure out which versions of dependencies play nice with each other, particularly in cases where we're using dependencies that weren't always natively designed to work with Kotlin applications. Okay, so I need one more, test implementation, and this time I'm pulling in RoboElectric org dot robo electric robo electric four point three okay so I've added a couple of dependencies and now I need to ensure that Gradle builds in order to get those dependencies into my project. 
There are a couple ways to do this. Up in the Build menu on the top of Android Studio, you can do Make Project. You'll notice that over on the right of that window of where it says Make Project, you see a little clover, four-leaf clover looking symbol, and then F9. That means that if you hit Command F9 on a Mac, you'll get Make Project without having to go to that menu. And now you see on the bottom it says Gradle Build. Gradle, download some stuff. Two processes running. Fail to resolve. Org Roboelectric Roboelectric 4-3. Oh. Roboelectric. Lol. All right, let's try again. Command F9. Is it building? I can't make it. Let me run the app and force a build that way. So now it's going to reinstall that on my emulator, which is fine by me. Great. So we added our dependencies. There is one more change that we need to make to the app level build.gradle in order to be able to use those dependencies properly in our app. So now we're going to move from the dependencies block of this file up to the Android block of this file. We already see a number of things in here. Compile SDK version, default config, build types. Most of this is generated automatically for us in our application. We're going to add one more thing manually, which is some test options. So I'm going to put test options, open an object there, and our test options will include unit tests. Inside of unit tests, I want to set include Android resources to true. This is going to allow my test to access Android resources so that it can make shadows of Android objects like activities or fragments, which I can then use in my unit tests. 